A student asked me to predict the bond angle of H2S. Now, my guess was going to be 104.5 degrees, which happens to be the bond angle for water. Oxygen and sulfur are in the same group, so I assumed the geometry would be the same, and that would have been my guess. Maybe it's the guess your teacher wants you to give as well. But if you're doing more advanced chemistry than regular high school, the actual answer is about 92 degrees, which is way smaller than what you'd probably predict. I'm going to show you two ways to think about this. First, let's draw the Lewis structure for H2S so we know what we're talking about. Now, according to Vesper, this AX2E2 geometry is roughly tetrahedral with a, like thinking about the lone pairs also counting towards the geometry, right? You've got one, two, three, four things around the sulfur. Two of them are lone pairs, which don't really take up any physical space, but there is the probability that electrons could be there. And so you'd say, okay, so how far apart can four things get? The answer is tetrahedral, but lone pairs don't really count towards molecular shape, and those lone pairs push the two hydrogens together slightly because lone pairs simply take up more space than bonding pairs do. Now, that crushes the 109.5 degree bond angle for a perfectly tetrahedral molecule down to 104.5 for water. But sulfur is larger than oxygen. If you want to think about this visually, you can say to yourself, well, S is larger, which means these two H's, which are the same size they always are, are already further apart from each other because the central thing is bigger. And therefore, they can get pushed together a little more aggressively by these lone pairs because they're, they're not as close to each other, period, by virtue of the large sulfur in the middle separating them. The actual answer is that as you go down the periodic table, the n, or principal quantum number, is getting larger, and the space between the s and p orbitals is getting larger as well. Now that means the hybridization, or turning this into a, what is this, sp3 hybridized sulfur, it has more P character than S character because of the larger energy difference between the, the 3S and the 3P orbitals that you're hybridizing together to make these hybrid orbitals. P orbitals, as you'll recall, align themselves along the X, Y, and Z axis. And so the more P character the hybridized orbitals have, the closer the angles are actually going to be to 90 degrees. That's how you can explain that H2S is 92 degrees. And uh, I read one source that says for H2SE, it's actually about 90 degrees exactly. Because again, the lower you go in the periodic table, the bigger the gaps are between the S and the P orbitals. And so they end up with more P character once they hybridize. Cool. I hope that made sense. That's two different ways to think about why this number is so much different than the one for H2O, despite the fact that these are all in the same group. And again, if you're doing introductory chemistry, 104.5 is a very valid guess. Good for you. The true answer is 92 for the reasons that we explained earlier. Thanks for sticking with me and best of luck.